Hello everyone, my name is Alex Rosa. I am a postdoctoral research associate at the University of Wisconsin Madison. And today I would like to share with you a summary of my, one of my chapters during my PhD program at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. This project is entitled Cover Crop Planting and Termination Time Influenced Development and Yield of Subsequent Corn Crop Under Semi Arid rain fed conditions of western Nebraska. One of the main crop rotations that producers adopt in western Nebraska is the winter wheat corn fallow rotation. In this figure displayed here in your screen, we can see how this crop rotation fits in a three year period. And as you can see, there are only two crops grown in a three year period. And the main reason that producers take such an approach is that they are concerned with their water conservation that further would be used for other crops. So in order to give you an idea how these producers are concerned, this map in your left, the Nebraska map, uh, you can see that as you travel west in Nebraska, the precipitation decreases dramatically, going from 30 to 18 inches. So almost half of the precipitation that happens in the west as compared to what happens in the east. Besides that, the low commodity prices, especially for winter wheat, the inefficient land use by having two fallow periods, also the herbicide resistant weeds by repeating this cropping system uh, years after years, and also the soil degradation by exposing the soil to fallow periods. Those are other concerns that producers are willing to mitigate. And some alternatives that producers and researchers have been investigating lately is the introduction of uh, field pea as a cool season legume crop that can fit right before winter wheat. In the other end, uh, and this is what this presentation will talk about, is the adoption of cover crops. Uh, and cover crops can be grown in this rotation right before corn, filling that fallow period that would otherwise be adopted. We know that cover crops have become very popular across the country because of their potential benefits in cropping systems, such as promote soil conservation, nutrient cycling, and weed suppression. However, in the semi-arid cropping systems of Western Nebraska, cover crops are a concern as they may use the water that was initially saved and can become a problem to subsequent crops so one of the strategies that producers can use to mitigate potential soil water use by cover crops is by deciding when to plant cover crops and when to terminate. So this study, uh, we adopted three different planting times for cover crops after winter wheat harvest. So we defined planting time one as three weeks after winter wheat harvest planting time two as six weeks after, and planting time three as nine weeks after. The other treatment that we also implied in this study was four different cover crop termination times. And that includes uh, control, which is no cover crop. Then we have a winter sensitive mixture that is frost terminated in the winter. The third one would be a winter hardy mixture early terminated, and by early we mean three weeks prior corn planting. And the last one, the winter hardy mixture late terminated. That was that one terminated at the day of corn planting. This study was conducted in North Platte and Grant in Nebraska in 2017 and 2018 growing seasons. You can see the exact locations here in the map in your right. 
During this study, we collected cover crop biomass uh, in the fall and also in the spring. We planted corn uh, in mid-May. Soil water was measured when corn was just emerging, and we measured from zero to eight inches deep in the soil. We also took soil samples when corn reached the V6. Those samples were from zero to four and four to eight inches soil depth. At the end of the study, grain yield was collected. This study was conducted in a randomized complete block design with strip plot. And we analyzed the data using SAS with pairwise comparisons at alpha 0.05 using Turkey adjustments. The cover crop biomass results are displayed in this table where we have the biomass accumulated in the fall accumulated in early spring and also in late in the spring. Then we have the treatments, the tree planting times, and here the four termination times. In the fall, the earlier we planted cover crops, the more biomass accumulated. As you can see here in this table, our earlier planting time produced two times the amount of biomass when compared, compared to six weeks after winter wheat harvest, and eight times greater when we planted cover crops nine weeks after uh, winter wheat harvest. When we look at the impact of termination time in the fall biomass, we will see that the winter sensitive species had up to 7% more biomass accumulation in relation to the winter hardy species. When we move to early spring biomass, we still notice that the earlier the planting time occurred in the previous fall, more biomass was accumulated uh, early in the spring. And as we go further in the late spring measurements, we will notice that it didn't matter when the cover crops were planted. Now, when we look at the soil water content, we notice that the planting time did not influence the soil water content. However, as we analyze the termination time, we will notice the late termination of cover crop reduced soil water content by 5%. So the termination time for cover crop is important to reduce the risk of soil water depletion at the time of corn planting. For soil fertility, we have in this table displayed total nitrogen, nitrate, and also the organic CN ratio. We have the planting times, and also the termination times here. We found that winter hardy late terminated cover crops reduced 17% of the total nitrogen in the soil and also up to 28% of the soil nitrate, which consequently increased the carbon nitrogen ratio in the soil when we used cover crops, especially late terminated, by 8% in comparison to our control, which in this case is no cover crop. So with the nitrogen data in mind, we took this aerial image uh, in one of our cover crop studies in Western Nebraska. This particular picture is from Grant in 2019. And you can see the clear difference in the green color between the cover crop plots and the no cover crop plots. Therefore, our corn grain yield results show that the last planting time will produce the least of an impact when we talk about corn grain yield uh, following cover crops. We can clearly see the reductions when we plant cover crop early in the fall which in this case was up to 5% of the total uh, productivity reached. Now, 
when we look at the termination time of cover crops in western Nebraska, it gives you give us a clear idea that as we delay the termination of those cover crops, the harder will be the yield drag in this environment, which can reach up to minus 20% of the yield compared to our control or fallow plots here in this study. So cover crops decreased corn grain yield regardless of termination time that they were done. As general conclusions and applications to crop management, the earlier cover crop planting time produced more biomass in the fall and early in the spring. The cover crop late terminated in the spring reduced the soil water content at the time of corn planting and also uh, reduced the total nitrogen in the soil. Cover crops in general reduced corn grain yield in western Nebraska. Planting cover crops early in the fall and terminating them late in the spring caused the most detrimental impacts in corn. The, the results of this experiment applies to the short term, that means to one crop rotation. If you would like to know more about this and other cover crop projects in semi-arid environments, visit this link and watch a full presentation of my PhD defense at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I would like to thank you very much for watching this video and to acknowledge the University of Nebraska-Lincoln in the name of the Agricultural Research Division and also all the support given by the Cropping System with Science team at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Thank you very much.